Hey y'all, Data Guy and the Data Dog are here today with a very special video on how to get started with ML and Airflow using Scikit-Learn. Um, so Scikit-Learn is, and it's not like Scikit-Learn, it's Science Kit-Learn, is basically a public open source way to create and run machine learning workflows. Um, you know, it's Python based, so it's just a package you download and it has a bunch of different models uh, that you can use to run predictions on your data. Um, so it's a really good way to get started with ML because it doesn't really require a ton of, you know, work building your own models. Um, they even have clean data, which we'll actually be using here that you can use to just test out uh, machine learning models. So you don't have to worry about the process of actually cleaning your own uh, data, which as anyone that's done machine learning can tell you is probably the hardest part. Um, I think it's, there's that old metric that's like 80% spent cleaning the data, 20% actually working with the data. Um, and so today what I'm gonna show you is just, hey, so I want to get started with Scikit. I wanna build a machine learning pipeline. You know, I wanna be able to ingest some data, do some light transformations, uh, then create a model, uh, train a model and run some predictions on it. Um, and so that's exactly what we'll be going through today. Um, I'll be showing you, you know, how to just quickly ingest some data from Scikit-Learn. Uh, that part can be subbed out for your own data if you want, but then bringing that data in, running some feature engineering, training a model on it, and then using that model to get some predictions, uh, in this case, for the medium house, median house value in California. Um, so that's kind of the overview. Without a further ado, let's get started. So before we actually get started writing the code, I just wanted a quick outline what this tag will look like when it's complete. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is extract that data I was talking about from scikit-learn, um, which is just simply just use a scikit-learn uh, method. Uh, then we're going to save that clean data to S3 so we can use it later on. Um, and then we're going to do some feature engineering on that data, save the resulting data frame into a local S3 file system. Uh, then we're going to train the model based on that feature engineer data set. Um, and then combine the feature train model with just a raw data frame to actually uh, predict the values for the medium host median house value in California. Um, then the final step of that is we're just going to save those predictions uh, in that same S3 file system. So this DAG really heavily leverages kind of just the ability to set up a local uh, S3 file system using Docker. Um, and the way the reason that's easy is because I'm using an Astro image. Um, and so I'm already running a Docker uh, compose that spins up all my Airflow components and it'll also just spin up an S3 file system. Um, so now you've kind of got the big picture. Let's get into the weeds and start coding. So the first thing we'll do, as we do with all our DAGs, is just import all our packages. So we're going to import the DAG decorator, date time, uh, SQL, or the Astro SDK AQL decorator. So this is just makes it, Astro SDK basically makes it easier to do things like, hey, I just want to extract some data from an API, and it'll automatically turn it into a data frame, and also allow you to pass SQL and Python uh, data sets in between each other. So I can run, you know, pandas on a SQL data data set, uh, and I, and Python on a SQL data set um, without needing to do the transformations in between the two. So it just eliminates a lot of the boilerplate code you typically have to do. Uh, then we're going to use the Astro files, um, just a way to create a reference to a file um, path and then just load it directly in. Uh, and then we'll also have the Astro pandas data frame, which is just a Airflow specific, Astro SDK specific version of pandas um, that again, just eliminates the need to actually uh, read in a data set and then treat it as a data and then transform into a data frame or just use the AQL data frame decorator, which then automatically ingests any data sets that are brought or data frames that are brought in as data frames. Um, so just an easy way to pass data frames in between tasks um, because for standard that you wouldn't be able to do that. Um, so import OS as well, just because we're gonna be interacting with the local operating system of our uh, Airflow installation to actually go and interact with that local S3 file system. Um, and then we're all good to go. So now it's time to actually build our DAG. So our DAG parameters are pretty simple. Just creating a DAG called AstroML, no scheduling interval, uh, start date, whatever you want, and catch up as false. Um, we're just going to call it AstroML here, just defining it using the uh, Airflow DAG decorator. So after we create the DAG, we're just going to create a couple of variables that we'll use later on for referencing where we're storing this data, just to eliminate us having to actually write out S3, uh, the full file path for each of our files. Um, so just data bucket, models bucket, um, model ID, which is just taking the current date time. So we just have timestamp models so they don't overwrite each other, uh, as well as the model directory where we're just joining the models bucket and the model ID there. Um, so we just have a directory directly to um, our most current model. Um, and so once we've done that, we can actually get started creating our first task. 
So our first task is pretty simple. Uh, all we're doing here is extracting that housing data from the SK Learn data set. So just like I was talking about before, um, SK Learn provides um, some sample data sets that you can use for machine learning. Um, and California housing is one of them. So here we're just importing that method um, and then returning the output of that method as a data frame, which is dot frame uh, attachment down here. Um, and so this is just going to take the results of this fetch California housing data set and turn it into a pandas data frame. Um, and then because we're returning it and it's an at HQL task, this is going to return or to set the output of this task um, as a pandas data frame of California housing data. Um, so that's the start of our journey. And now let's start building some features on this. And so our next task is a bit of a doozy. Um, so here we have it, build features. Um, and this is where we're actually going to be building the features uh, that we'll use for machine learning. Um, so feature engineering. So here again, using that AQL uh, decorator, so this means this task ingests a data frame and also returns one um, and taking in that raw data frame. So that raw data, as well as the model directory where we're going to be wanting to save this data frame after we create it. Then what we'll do is import uh, the standard scaler from sklearn. So do some pre-processing using again, a scikit-learn uh, library, uh, importing pandas as PD uh, from job lib import dump and S3 file system. So these are just way to interact with that file system. Job lib's just gonna dump some things from it. Um, and then we also have this S3 file system, which is allows us to interact with that S3 file system that we spun up in, in parallel with our uh, Airflow uh, cluster, I guess mini cluster on, on your Docker desktop. Uh, then we're gonna create a local instance of this S3 file system. So kind of just like a hook, so we can just pull directly from it later. Um, set a target value. So this, in this case, we're looking for the medium house housing value. So we're going to rough that from this data frame existing so we can create a clean data set um, and then use that to predict what the median house value is. Um, so you can see here being dropping that uh, target column um, and then also creating a uh, data frame that is just strictly of this target column. Um, so one just that we're looking for the medium house value and one of, you know, without the median house value. Um, then we are uh, using that standard scalar to transform and fit um, this pandas data frame uh, and doing feature engineering so that we can figure out what the key features of this data set are um, and then saving that uh, that scalar uh, for later monitoring and evaluation uh, and then finally we are setting uh, creating a new column x target after we've actually done our feature engineering so you can't do the feature engineering with the target column in there uh, what you'll have to do is take that target column out and then add it back in after you've done your uh, feature engineering. So that's what's happening down here. And then finally, what we'll do is just return that data frame, which has been feature engineered um, back into that local S3 file system. And we're returning it um, as a data frame for our next task to use. And so now that we've done that, let's create our next task. So our next task is going to train our model. Um, so here we're taking that feature DF that we just created from our last task, loading it in, again, loading in our model directory so we know where to point this to to save and load in our model. Um, importing, instead of the scalar, we're importing now the linear, linear ridge CV model. So it's just a linear regression model provided by scikit-learn that we're going to be using to you know, figure out, hey, what are the median housing values in California? Um, probably super high. Then we're also going to import numpy just for interactions with local files, um, job lib. So again, we can just dump the results of queries back into that S3 file system. Um, and of course, S3 file system as well. So we're again, just creating kind of a, local, or a hook into that. Uh, we're setting the target again within the context of this task. And then we are creating our model. So here we're just using that ridge CV um, that is going to pass into, uh, you know, looking for the alphas of it. Um, that is going to use the numpy array, uh, find some log space, do some model training, um, and then we're going to fit that model. Um, this is basically just to find the parameters of the model. And then what you'll use here is actually fitting that model to that feature data frame um, while dropping that target, uh, as well as, which, so you have that clean data that you're using to actually run the model on, uh, and then the feature data has just the target on it um, so that you have just that target data, so we can kind of match that up between, hey, were these predictions actually accurate um, down the line? And then here, we're just setting the model file URI so it knows where to save this file. Um, and then we are going to just dump that model file into the local file system um, and then return that URI so our next task can reference it. And now let's write our next task. Now it's finally time to generate our predictions. 
So here in this predict housing task, what we're doing is again, ingesting that feature data frame because we need um, that clean data set to actually run this model, predictive model on, uh, as well as the model file URLs or URI, so we can reference that model file we just created. Uh, then what we're doing, importing job libs, we can load files in that S3 file system, creating a hook instance. And then what we're doing is loading that file that we just saved uh, in the prior task. So here's where we're loading it, and then here's where we're actually opening it, setting our target value again. And now we're running a prediction. So here, loaded model dot predict. Then we're again pointing it to that feature data frame, um, dropping the target because we don't can't give it the answers to its uh, predictions. Um, so here, that's what that's doing. And then what we're doing is we're saving those predictions uh, to this feature DF with Pretz. Um, and so this is kind of the end. So we're not totally done. We're gonna have to set some bit mapping and, and save these files around. But this is what's actually creating our right, creating the predictions and then saving them to this data frame. Um, so what you'll do is you take this data frame, you can open it up and you can see, hey, were these values uh, similar, better or worse uh, than the actual values within this data set? Um, so really cool stuff there. Um, and so now that you have that, we'll save it to our local file system. What I always, I actually sometimes just add a uh, print feature DF, um, just so you can see, hey, this is what my predictions are without needing to actually go in and uh, open the file system uh, manually. Um, and so once we're done with that, it's time to actually just define our tasks using the task API. Um, so the first task we will define is uh, extracting that housing data as extract DF. Um, then in parallel to that second task we did where we're actually um, building the features, we're just going to save this raw data frame um, to our local S3 instance. Um, so that get, it gets referenced down the line um, when we're asking for that clean data set. Um, it's also just a good to have as a reference. So, hey, you know, I can compare this extracted clean data versus the predicted um, values of what I thought this data was going to be. Um, then after we're done with that, we will uh, define our uh, feature DF. So this is where we're building the features. And you can see that we're taking the output of your extract housing data. So that's stored as extract DF, passing that into build features so it can use that extracted data frame as well as a directory path that we define so it knows where to save and pull the models from. Uh, then what we're doing for train model uh, is giving us a model file URI. So the training of the model creates a model file that we're using then to run the predictions. Um, so that again is ingesting that feature DF that we created um, at the start. And then uh, that we return from build features. Um, so kind of that once features built, pass it into the train model training. Give it again the model directory um, and then finally you have that predict housing where we are uh, taking that feature data frame taking that model file uri and then using that to run that uh, scikit learn model um, on our housing data and then save the predictions um, and then the final step of that uh, that is actually saving the predictions not just uh, me saying it is red file at aql export file so this is an, again another uh Astro SDK uh, decorator that just basically say, you know, choose an input, choose an output, and we'll take care of the rest. So you don't need to worry about like, hey, if you use a specific S3 to Snowflake or a local to S3, you can just use the export file uh, function. Sorry, operator. Um, and here, just taking that prediction data frame that we produced here uh, and saving it to that local S3 file system for posterity. Um, and then once that's all done, we just create one line of code, Astro ML at the bottom, and boom. You got a fully functioning uh, Airflow machine learning deck. So if we go back into our uh, Airflow UI, we can watch it quickly run. So I just ran it there. Um, and here we can see under predict, because I added that print DF, uh, it will actually show just a normal path of that actual file. So if you want to go look at the file, you, know, you can of course just add you know, your print DF to actually print it out for you. Here, this is just going to print the uh, model URL, or sorry, not URL, the path, and then you can go to your local S3 file system, pull that out and look at your predictions. Um, and that's really all I got for you today. So I really hope you learned something. I know I did in the process of this. Um, and so me and the data dog are out. Have a good one, y'all. Happy coding.